Hello, I want to share with you a video from my master's online course. So Master 500, Master 3000 is based on the yacht syllabus, but it will work for any Masters Unlimited and Chief Mate Unlimited is actually identical. You click on it, you can then subscribe for either one month if you're fast and furious, two months if you want to learn at your pace, or three months access if we are lucky enough um, to be on rotation or you want that extra time. Once you're inside, what will you see? You're going to see the core material from the Officer of the Watch. You're then going to see all of the masters. So I will share with you the introduction to certification. So it's going to be a full video, um, but I just want to show you how you're meant to use it. So you're going to play the video. Then we're going to look at the quiz questions and we're going to view the documents. Now, I would always suggest that you want to have the notes that match the video. So you click on view documents and we're going to have the master's notes. Now, in the, in the details below, I will put a link so you can download these um, notes so you can see how it works, what the style is, and if it would work for you. Okay, they're available. Every section has its own notes, its flashcards, and my reference material. You have the option of downloading to your device, so you can use them on an iPad, or you can print them, um, or you can save them for future reference. I've also included all my reference material. Some of it's easy enough to find online. Other stuff, not so much. Um, where it's possible, I have supplied you with my reference material. So in this case, uh, MGN 561, the enhanced authorization. Yeah. Then let's let's watch the video. Okay, seems fair. Play video. Very simple, normal video controls. Now inside my web-based app, you have a choice of. Hold on, you can watch it all in a second. You have a choice of the speed that I'm going to speak at. You can make it faster or slower. Probably never slower. Um, then you have a quality control and the size, pretty basic. But it is nice with the quality control. If you're on a VSAT connection, you can bring it down to 240, or if you want to put me in your high definition, 1080. Um, what I'm going to do is press play, and I'm going to allow you to watch the whole video so you have an idea of the style of teaching and what's going on, and then we'll do some quiz questions. Now, there's not many quiz questions for this, um, for the lights, for the rules, there's hundreds. I mean, in total, there is over 800 quiz questions for my master's course. Now, that's ridiculous. No one else is ever going to get close to that. The great thing is, because it's now all um, online, it's not Apple-based, I will be updating them. So you will always have the most up-to-date quiz questions that match exam styles of the moment. I'm going to press play, and I'll come back at the end of the video. Introduction to certificates and surveys. This I found hard when I did my master's ticket. The reason being is I've been running a boat during the down periods, down the winter, as the standing captain. And effectively, I had a list of certificates inside the captain's cabin. And I just had to keep them within date. If they were coming within three months of their anniversary, their expiry date, or their renewal date or their inspection date, I would receive an email and the management company would tell me that there was somebody coming. I would prepare for the survey. I would pass the survey and I'd get an endorsement on the piece of paper. Done. Very simple. When I tried to revise for my master's and I was told I had to learn, I don't know, 30 odd certificates their renewal dates, their expiry dates, what you have to do. It felt like a huge amount of extra information I didn't need. You may feel like that when you finished watching these, these videos about certificates. However, it is important that we understand who has responsibility for them, how they're surveyed, when they're surveyed, and why they exist. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to look at is the requirements for surveys. Where would we find the information about why we need to have a survey done? 
we're going to find it in Solas. Now, you'll see I have the 2014 edition in my hand. Now, things may change. You know, today, this is the most current book that's in existence. But if I looked at last year, 2009, which is the previous version, there would be no difference between you know, Regulation 6 that we're going to talk about and Regulation 6 today or tomorrow or in whatever period this is in the future. If there's something that has changed dramatically and will have an impact on the concept value of these videos, I will update them. Yeah. So if the MGN or the, the book has changed or the color has changed or the cover has changed, don't panic. It doesn't mean the video is out of date. It just means that time has happened. If it is a big update, then I would have updated it um, or there'll be an addition a spit in the note saying, this has been updated, the new M notice number is. They do change things. So don't panic if today's version of Solas doesn't look like this. We're going to look at part B, surveys and certificates. Okay, so it's regulation six. And I'm going to put it on the screen. Regulation six, inspection and survey. The inspection and survey of ships, so far as regards the enforcement of the provisions of the present regulations, and granting any exceptions from them shall be carried out by the officers of the administration. The administration, the flag state, may, or however, entrust the inspections and surveys either to surveyors nominated for the purpose or to organizations. So that's ROs, that's registered organizations. So classification societies are the normal um, ROs. Um, So we, why do we have these surveys? We have certificates that prove that the ship has complied with the requirements of a convention or a legislative law. And by having the survey, it allows them to issue a certificate, renew a certificate, endorse a certificate either annually or intermediate. So how do we know our vessel is safe to go to sea? Because it has the appropriate certification. It doesn't say that it's you know, safe, safe to go to sea. It'd have to be maintained safely to go to sea, but it means that it's within the law. You know, if you buy a car, it will need to have an MOT and rego or roadworthy certificate or having paid the registration fee for it. Otherwise, the police are gonna pull you over and they're going to impound the car. Same with the boat. If you don't have a valid certification, you are not legally able to go to sea. So your insurance will be invalid. Your um, liability will be oh, through the roof. So how do you know you can legally proceed to sea? Because you have a valid certification. How do you keep your certification valid? By having surveys. What types of ship survey are there? So in the notes, it's got all of the surveys that you have, and it is worth learning these. Now, I found these in something called um, MCIS 23. So I don't know what the MCIS stands for, but it's basically the surveyor's information and instructions to surveyors. On the screen there, you will see that we have different survey types. There are seven types of survey carried out as part of the survey system. So we have a initial survey, which is a complete examination before the ship is put into service and all items relating to the certificate to be issued to ensure the, the met or relevant requirements and that are satisfied, basically everything is gonna be checked. It's an initial survey, everything is gonna be checked. Then we have a periodic survey, a complete examination of all items relating to a certificate to ensure that they are satisfactory condition and they are fit for the intended or the ship's intended service. Then we have a renewal survey, which is a complete examination of all items. So initial and renewal is basically the same. Initial is the first time it's ever been surveyed and renewal is having a new certificate issued. 
we then have an intermediate, which is an inspection of specified items. Okay? And it relates to the circuit to ensure that they are in satisfactory condition and they are fit for the ship's intended service. Then we have a annual, which is a general inspection of the items relating to a certificate, and it is ensuring that they have been maintained to a certain level. Basically, it's the amount of time. So initial means loads of time. Yeah, they have spent days looking at everything on board. They are really taking that apart, having a good look. A annual survey is just a you know, a couple of hours on board, having a good look through, making sure it's still there. Um, hopefully it would work. Then we have a intermediate, which is sort of more thorough. So normally if a five, if a certificate's worth five years or valid for five years, the annual is every year. Intermediate is between year two and three and it replaces the annual. So annual is a visual inspection. Oh yeah, it's still there. Amazing. Whereas intermediate is a much more in depth look at is it going to work does it work has it been maintained then we have the inspection of the ship's bottom so this is normally in a dry docking um, period and they come along and they check everything on the outside of the boat so they're going to look at through hole fittings they're going to look at um, stern glands they're going to look at the rudder they're going to look at the stainless steel parts they're going to look at anodes the general condition of the bottom of the vessel we have additional surveys, which is an inspection either general or partial, according to the circumstance, and it's made whenever important repairs. So if you ding that boat, yeah, you've touched bottom, we've done something, you're gonna have an additional survey before it's put back in service. Um, special surveys, it's normally time dependent, so every 10, 15 years, they're gonna have a special survey to make sure that everything is as, as it should. So on one of the boats I worked on was very old, I mentioned it a few times, big Heide G. So at her 50 year old, or when she was 50, and when she was 80, they want to check the hull thickness, so they'd have a special survey, yeah? Because you're kind of now outside of the normal parameters of a maintenance schedule, of a survey schedule. Continuous survey, when items are open up for the survey, the convenience of the ship, all items being surveyed during the life of the certificate as part of the machinery may be surveyed as part of the planned maintenance. They're making sure that everything that's there is being maintained in the way that they would expect it to be. Okay? You and I need to know about initial, periodic, renewal, and intermediate, and annual. Make sure you've got flashcards for each of those surveys. I know they're very similar, but they are different in the amount of time allocated to the surveyor to do that survey. We then have different systems or survey systems. So once again, looking at the instructions to the surveyor, we have an ad hoc or occasional survey system. So that would be a boat that was like a museum piece that went out every now and again and just would have survey for a Pacific voyage. Seems very unlikely for a super yacht, um, possibly for an older boat. Then we have a routine survey system, which is the traditional system where you, um, your expiry date is there, your certificate's there, and there is no harmonization. There's, as it goes out of date, you renew that certificate. So you'd probably have an awful lot of time spent liaising with flag or class to stay within your certificated means. Because as we go through, there are a lot of certificates. Yeah, lots. 30 something certificates that you need to know about. If you're doing a 500, you are going to have to work out which ones are relevant for you because I have not taken them apart in my videos between the 500 and 3000, but there's plenty in large yacht code that tells you which certificates are for which gross tonnage vessels. Um, my brain has actually worked them into SOLAS because that's what makes a boat safe. Then the main certificates, then the MARPOL, and then limitations and other bits and bobs. So the harmonized system of survey, H C H H S S C entered into effect on February two thousand. Yeah. 
And as a result of the amendments of SOLAS, Load Line and MARPOL Convention Protocols, the primary aim of this harmonized system was to harmonize everything together so that instead of having to have you know, seven um, surveyors come during the year, you could have one surveyor come once a year and survey everything that was required in that one survey. So they basically produced all certificates and they, com well, they made them harmonize them all so that their expiry dates all lined up. So you could reduce the amount of time that a surveyor was coming to the vessel. Today, as I said before, don't panic, but today MSN 781 is the go-to for this information. I'll put it up on the screen. So MSN 1751. If the MSN number has changed, don't panic. The core information is unlikely to change to the level that you and I need to pass an oral exam. Um, the harmonized system of survey and certification seeks to standardize the period of validity and intervals between surveys for the nine major conventions to a maximum period of validity for all the certificates except the passenger ship to five years. So they're making everything five years long and having the surveys at the same time. Hopefully, this will bring benefits to the industry in terms of flexibility of survey schedules, reduced number of surveyors, survey time and paperwork, and therefore reducing costs. Okay. Under the HSSC, there are seven types of survey. We have discussed those. And this is where I would suggest that you probably go through and you have a good look. As I go through the videos, we're going to discuss the cargo ship safety equipment. We're going to discuss cargo ship radio installations. This is where my data is coming from. Yeah. A super yacht actually comes under this harmonized system of survey and certification. We are going to discuss other different types, but today our super yacht does come under that. The syllabus and the questions asked by the examiners don't always match. So my videos hopefully answer questions asked in the exam and the fact that I have looked at all of the exam papers for the last couple of years at all of the exam centers that will take super yacht crew and I have made sure that these videos answer those questions. I've also taken apart the syllabuses for both the 500 and 3000 and made sure the videos cover the syllabuses. So sometimes the examiners ask questions that are not within the syllabus. Shock horror. Sometimes they ask questions that don't relate to super yachts. It does happen with these certificates. Okay, don't panic about it because I have covered those. Um, let's have a look at the key, key parts of MSN 7051 together. The main points of the harmonized system are maximum period of validity for all certificates shall be five years. The passenger ship, which we're not involved with because that's we can't work on those boats, but if you were working on a passenger ship because you're doing I don't know, an unlimited, then that should be renewed annually. But for everything else, all other certificates are five years. Each full term of five years will follow directly on from the previous one unless a ship is laid up or undergoing major repairs. In order to provide the necessary flexibility, the renewal survey may be carried up to three months before the expiry of the existing certificates. That's like a CARS MOT in the UK, where it's one month before. The new certificate will be dated from the expiry date of the old. So if you had it, if your expiry was May the 1st, you could do it April the 1st, or any time between April the 1st and May the 1st. And even if you do it early, it will still get another five years, same as an MOT. Cars and boats are very similar. Uh, a certificate may be extended for a period of up to three months, or for ships engaged in short voyage, that period of grace may be one month. If they extend your um, certificate validation for three months, and that is an exam question, pay attention, um, then 
when you arrive at your destination, you can't carry on going. It's for the duration of that. They extend it up to three months for the duration of that voyage generally. Okay, can't just keep going and extending it three months. Each certificate will be subject to an annual, intermediate, or periodic survey each year within three months of its anniversary date, as follows. Passenger certificate we're not worried about. Cargo ship we are going to worry about. Um, international load line we're going to worry about. Cargo ship safety. I'm not going to go through these. We go through these in a few minutes. It's in the notes because I think it is quite important you know what is going to have a in initial, intermediate, periodic, and annual and renewal. But for each certificate, I will spend a bit of time explaining each of them to you. There is a new cargo ship safety certificate, and this combines all of the SOLAS. So you can either have, where is it? There is a new cargo ship certificate, which includes provision for recording all the surveys required for the cargo ship safety equipment, cargo ship safety radio certificate, and cargo ship safety construction certificate may be issued as an alternative to the existing cargo ship safety certificate. You can either have those main SOLAS ones or just one that is a new certificate that covers them all. I will discuss it in future videos, but it should be, it should be there in your mind. So SOLAS can either be three certificates or it can be reduced to just one single certificate. Super yachts I've worked on have all had the bigger ones together. I'm not sure what your boat will have, but you should be aware that they can be consolidated into one certificate. Alternative compliance scheme. When they brought about this harmonized system in 2000, they did a trial. Alternative compliance scheme. There was an update in 2005 to allow in the system of an alternative, the harmonized system. Not on super yachts, just on real big ships. Um, it came in as a trial, it lasted, it was meant to last for three years and it has actually stayed. So this is MGN 300, this was the, the notice giving details on the extension of the trial. Don't write stuff down, don't need to know about this. It then got replaced by MGN 345, which was then replaced by MGN 568, Surveys Alternative Compliance Schemes. So this today is the most recent MGN. There's been four or three other MGNs before it. Four MGNs before it. So that's why I'm saying don't panic if they change the number. The information contained in these MGNs have all been the same. It's just there's no longer a trial. It's now an accepted system. And the idea is that you can delegate the work of the flag state, the MCA in our case, to these recognized organizations. So normally classification societies. So the ACS streamlines the survey and certification process while maintaining standards and minimalizing duplication of effort with recognized organizations. So instead of having two surveyors attend the vessel twice a year or once a year and do the same job, the NCA can say, hey guys, we now authorize you to go and do these surveys on our behalf. So you only have to meet the man once. He does the survey for both class and flag because there's a very difficult line between the two. The concept that I think is very important is that the MCA has delegated or extended so the classification side can issue all the hardware certification. But the MCA have retained the operational matters. So hardware being, is there LSA equipment? Is there a life raft? Has it been maintained correctly? Is it in date? While the MCA want to confirm that its ships are complying on an operational level. So if we look at that, the scheme, and remember the word hardware, 
to the Classification Society and operational matters to the flag, the MCA. I say that because I am looking at this again is the instructions to the surveyors. And it is explaining the alternative compliance scheme. So you and I should be looking at MGN 568 while the surveyor is looking at part A, chapter 27. You don't need to fully understand it, but you should be aware of it. The MCA gives out a COI, a certificate of inspection. Okay? So they will do a certificate of inspection to the ship and they will then hand over to a classification society. So when a satisfactory survey has been completed, a full term C certificate of inspection can be issued valid up to five years. And the expiry date should be selected to match the expiry date of the SMC, that's ISM documentation. As with the SMC audits, coal service can be carried up to three months before the expiry of the certificate and you see what issued. So there's a, a little bit of natural movement there so that they can make everything come together. They can harmonize it. This, this information here is a little bit too much for what you and I need to do. But I want you to be aware that the MCA has allowed, this is it here, certification of inspection requirements are comparable to a very thorough general inspection and comprises of two aspects, hardware and operations. Satisfaction with the hardware condition will be ascertained by reference to conditions of class raised against ship by class surveyors, port state history and direct observation on boards. Satisfactory operations will be ascertained by ISM audit, port state control history and observations of activities on board. So within it, an alternative compliance scheme, the MCA are allowing the class surveyors or recognized organizations to do the surveying of hardware. The MCA though has remained on top of the day-to-day -day operations of the vessel, making sure that you're doing drills, making sure that you're prepared for emergency preparedness, making sure that you're complying with ISM, ISPS, MLC. Yeah, the actual day-to-day -day running of the vessel is still with flag. And that is, the, is, is important to the MCA. Okay? So... This allows the Maritime Coast Guard Agency. So I'm now jumping back to our MGN 568. And the scheme delegates all survey work of the United Kingdom authorized or to the United Kingdom authorized recognized organization. This allows the MCA to maintain an oversight of the structure of the ship and its management systems through ACS, so Alternative Compliance Scheme, inspections, International Safety Management Audits, ISPS Audits, and Maritime MLC um, Inspections. All statutory certificates except ISM, DOC, SMC, ISPS, and ML Certification will remain, which remain the responsible of the M MCA, are issued by the UK recognized organization, commonly known as classification societies. So the MCA are handing over everything except ISM, ISPS, and MLC. And the issue of this initial, um, what was it called? Certificate of Inspection, COI. I'm pretty sure that's probably quite garbled. Hopefully it's made sense. It is quite a complicated um, concept. And I would like for you to read through MGN 568. Okay. Look at the notes. Make sure you make a flashcard. It is not complicated. The MCA have handed over all responsibility for the hardware certification to
classification societies, but they are maintaining or keeping control of ISM, ISPS, and MLC. We have another one, which is enhanced authorization scheme. That is today MGN 561, enhanced authorization scheme. It is new and different from the existing alternative compliance scheme and is published separately with this MGN. And following recommendations in the UK Maritime Growth Study in 2016, there was an enhanced authorization scheme has been introduced. And it provides for partial or full authorization to the UK classification societies for survey and audit of selected UK registered ships operating on eligible shipping companies linked to a flag inspection regime and based on a risk profile. Basically, it's handing over everything except ISM to the classification societies. Um, both schemes provide for authorization of survey work, so either you can be ACS or ECEAS, or you can be the harmonized system. Super yachts are harmonized. Both schemes, ACS and EAS, um, allow classification societies to do all the audits basically for everything with the exception of ISM documents. So the MCA have handed everything over, including ISPS and MLC, and they are now just holding back to ISM documentation. They just basically handed over pretty much everything except ISM to class. You, you need to be asked, you need to be invited into this EAS, and they have a risk assessment. So according to Annex 3 here, risk profiling, they're going to only allow boats that have a very low risk. They have um, low inspections. They haven't had any major nonconformities. Now their boats have been detained. And if that is the case, they become an eligible shipping company and their ships are then selected. And it basically is just meaning the MCA can say, oh, these guys have been really well behaved. They've been running really safe ships. We're happy with them. We're going to let class manage them fully with the exception of ISM. If you're not eligible for that, then you can be in ACS. ACS is, well, these ships have been fairly well, well run, well looked after. Um, we'll delegate everything with the exception of ISM, ISPS, MLC. And then you have the harmonized system, which is where nothing is delegated. Can you um, imagine what super yachts come under? Yeah? So let's have a look. I think there was one more bit I wanted to show you there. Scope of enhanced. You can see now how they have handed over the SMC, ISPS, MLC uh, into the enhanced authorization. So ISM document compliance will still be carried out by the MCA. So under enhanced, everything apart from DOC is now farmed out to a classification society. So go on then. Did you have an answer? Where, where would you find out where a super yacht should be surveyed and certification? If you do know, large yacht code. Yeah, Red Ensign Group yacht code. And we are looking at the common annexes. If we go to Annex N, Survey Certification and Accident Investigations, all ships, see where I am, covered by this code are required to be surveyed and certified in accordance with the applicable requirements of the survey guidelines under the IMO harmonized system of survey and certification adopted by blah, blah, blah. MSN 1751. Yeah. So a super yacht complying with the large yacht code, which all of our super yachts will do, have only really got the choice of the IMO harmonized system of HSSC. Uh, the examiners have asked about 
this enhanced, and they've asked about this alternative compliance scheme, um, hence why it was included. Learn about the alternative compliance scheme, yeah? That has been a fairly common exam question. Enhanced, not so much, but it is fairly, by MCA standards, new. So I really want you to have spent quite a lot of time looking at MSN 7051 or whatever the newest version is, but the harmonized system of survey and certification. I can't see it changing for some time. Okay. Um, what else is here? You, use of a recognized organization. Statutory work may be undertaken by surveyors, by the administrators, or by surveyors of recognized organizations, which are generally classification societies. And... The administration, which with the vessel is registered, obliged to investigate certain accidents or incidents in accordance with the requirements of international conventions. It may be an offense for a vessel's master, that's you, or owner not to inform the appropriate authority of a reportable accident shortly after it occurs and to provide details so an assessment of the seriousness can be made quickly. If you go aground, or if you have a problem, you are to inform the port state that you are in and class and flag and your DPA and everyone else. Yeah? If you have an issue, then you can't not tell someone. Okay? Makes sense? So if you go aground or you have a collision or you have anything that comes up later on the MAIB reports and what you must report, then you must report it to port state, the, the, the state that you're within. So if you're in France, you must report it to them and your classification society and your flag state and your DPA. Um, all serious, all very, but all very serious marine casualties in accordance with the IMO definition are reported to the IMO through the administration. Parts of large yacht code and LY3 was something called division of responsibilities. So under the harmonized system, the MCA may delegate authority to a classification society to do X, Y, and Z, very similar to their um, alternative compliance schemes and their enhanced compliance scheme. So on the MCA website, you're looking for an LY3 division of responsibilities. And if we click on it, it shows the division of responsibilities under the new regs for yachts. Why it's called, well, it's LY3 is one side and how that's been carried forward. So it's the MCA Large Yacht Services Division of Responsibilities. So they're saying who <coughs> is responsible for complying with these things. So Regs for Yachts is today's version. Uh, LY3 is old. It went out in 2019. And you can see, you know, construction has been handed out to a classification society, whereas stability is being kept um, within the MCA. And you can see that. I want you just to have an idea of this form, MSF1100. It is inside the notes there. It's just, I think it's important that you're aware of who has responsibility for which certification as we go forwards. We are going to now talk about certificates and I have brought them into the certificates for super yachts. So I'm going to break them down. I'm gonna break them down into SOLAS, safety related in my mind the main certificates, MARPOL certificates, liability certificates, and books and other certification. I'm not saying that's the best way of doing it. It is just the way that my brain worked when I studied this as doing my master's, and now, you know, slightly later, I still see it the same way. So I have my SOLAS ones. They mean I am safe to go to sea. Then I have other certificates that mean I'm registered. I, I can't leave my jurisdiction without a registration 
um, certificate. I can't go without ISM, I can't go without ISPS. It doesn't make me unsafe, it just makes me, you know, the Stolas ones, in my opinion, in my mind, mean I'm safe to go to see, I'm seaworthy. Some of the other ones mean, you know, not necessarily that I'm safe as such, but the boat has been run in a well-found manner. Where would you find a list of certificates for a super yacht over 24 meters? Yeah, reg, <laughs> regs for yachts. Large yacht code, a very good starting place. List of certificates to be issued. The bit that's a bit scary here is every vessel to which this code applies should be certified in accordance with the relevant provisions of the applicable conventions as amended. This shall include as a guide, but not necessarily limited to those listed in this annex. So this is a great place to start from, but it's not necessarily limited to those in this annex. This is not the same sequence as I'm going to teach it, but it is a good starting point. Where else would you look up all the certification you need for a ship. Da da! Solas. Inside Solas, Annex 1, they have the certificates, certificates and documents required to carry it on board ship. So, this is where I have produced my list. Okay? Um, you need to jump between the large yacht code and Solas. If you comply with a large yacht code, you are said to comply to the extent that a super yacht is required to comply with both international and national legislation. But we need to understand where it's coming from and to a certain extent where the examiner is coming from. Okay, so the large yacht code has in one of the annexes, which one was that? Do you remember? Annex M has a list of certificates to be issued to all vessels. 300 gross tons and over, 400 gross tons and over. So if you're just doing a Master 500, you just need to know those ones. You can probably ignore some of my um, discussion going forwards. If you're doing up to 3,000 gross tons, then you definitely need to know all of these here. But also, these are just the guide. So we're going to go to the, bad, you know, the daddy, and we're going to talk about all of these ones here listed inside Solas. Okay, next videos will be SOLAS, then main certificates, liabilities, um, others, and books. Thank you for listening. I hope it's made sense. Move on to the next video. Was that as good for you as it was for me? I hope it was. So, quiz. We have quizzes for each section. I'm going to reset and intermediate survey now. Did you learn what an intermediate survey was? An inspection of... Now, I know it's specified because I watched the video. So it's specified, confirm answer, yes. Yes, we did well. Correct. HSSC stands for Higher Secondary School Certificate. It doesn't. But if you did think it did, click on that and confirm the answer. Oh, my days. It goes red and you get my feedback harmonized system of survey and certification that was easy to get right so you should have got that right uh, i'm sorry um, next question initial survey a a complete inspection isn't it so that's gonna be right now some of the quiz questions yeah this is quite a hard one i guess we can look at voyage i've got those in the row ones um i, I want you to have an idea of you know you can select three so I'm guessing MLC will be wrong. STCW, probably not MLC will be right. I got it right. Whew, lucky. Uh, super yachts to be surveyed under which system? Hmm, question. Now I know what it is. I'm going to say it's ad hoc, which is incorrect. I don't want to tell you all the answers. You should have watched the video. Ah, oh, no, I got it wrong. So large yacht code. So it's an a harmonized system. Now it's nice here, when you make a mistake, you can actually look at the question navigator, you can go back, you can see what mistakes you've made, so that hopefully we're learning. We can then keep going forwards, this is the last one. An enhanced authorization system um, or scheme is available too. It's selected, I'm gonna choose the wrong one. Um, confirm answer, oh, no, Fred's feedback. Next question, that should be the end, and it'll give you a score. 
How nice is that? That you get a score, oh, 50%, not good enough. You should see what happens when you get 100%. Ooh, take clothes off. <laughs> uh, no, you should see what happens when I get to 100%. You can then go on to the rest of the sessions. You can retake the quiz. The Everything is remembered. I'm hoping that this has shown you what is inside my master's online course. I look forward to seeing you at one of my weekly webinars. And if you have any questions, send me an email, get in contact. I look forward to seeing you.